Hey guys, I am so excited about the project that I'm building with you today. If you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you know that I listed my house back in the spring, but I'm so excited. I decided to stay here, but I've got an itch now to redo all the furniture in my house and I'm starting in the kitchen. So I'm starting right here with a round table. I love this table. I built it a few years ago. It's been great for us, but I'm looking for a little bit more of a modern look. So I've designed a really cute, rustic, modern round table. It's gonna be the exact same size, seat the same amount of people. And eventually, once I finish that, I will make this bench a little bit more modern too. So let's head out to my shop and get building. So here's the design I'm building. It's the same size table. It's got four spots for chairs and I love the rustic cross pieces on the bottom with this little notch right here for decoration and it's a one and a half inch thick tabletop. I think it's gonna be really pretty. So the first thing I'm doing is lining up all of the tabletop planks. I've already cut them to size according to my plans and I've ripped each board to five inches wide. They are two by sixes, so I took a half an inch off. They're, they're five and a half inches to begin with. I ripped off both sides and that makes each edge really nice and smooth. And a tip, after I cut them, I mark which cut they are. So the middle ones are 50 inches. The ones next to those are 48 inches. And when I mark that, I don't have to go back and measure and it's just a lot easier. What I'm also doing is I'm facing these planks upside down where the pocket holes are gonna be. And while I'm laying them out, I'm checking both sides to see which side's gonna make the smoothest surface for the top of the table. And I'm putting the rough side on the upside down parts. So that's gonna be where the pocket holes are. And another tip, with all this craziness and all of the online ordering going on right now, it's made it super easy to shop at the hardware store. I put all of my boards and my cart online and um, I added a few just in case they didn't pick the straightest boards. So I added a few extras and I needed those because I had two wonky boards that came with that. So I'll return those later. But it was so great because I added it to my cart, did a curbside pickup, I took my trailer to the hardware store, pulled up, they loaded my trailer for me and I was gone. So it was so easy. Okay, so now I'm just going back and making sure that all of my boards are exactly even for each other. So the middle two are gonna be flush with each other and then the next one's gonna be an inch shorter on both ends. That way it's nice and center when I cut my circle. And you don't have to remember all of that because it's on the free printable plans and they are linked in the description box below. Okay, now I've got all of my boards lined up the way they're supposed to be and I'm gonna go now and mark for each pocket hole on each end of the boards. I do that because I'm gonna be cutting a circle and if you put your pocket hole screw too close to the end, your router bit could come through and hit the pocket hole screw. I've had that happen. It's not fun to replace that bit. So I've got it marked on the plans where you need to place the last pocket hole on each board. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so you can see on these two middle boards, I've already marked where the pocket hole is gonna go on this board and it has to start one and seven eighths inch from the edge because that circle is gonna come along right here. And if I place the pocket hole right here, I'll miss the pocket hole screw. If I place it too close to the end, I'll break my bit. So I've got all of my pocket holes marked and I'm gonna use my Craig jig. This is a foreman and I like to use it when I'm doing a lot of pocket holes. It makes it faster. You can use your K5, K4, R3, whatever kind of pocket hole jig that you have. But I'm gonna use the foreman for this. I'll add a link in the description box below to this and our favorite Craig jig model. So now I'm gonna take each plank and drill for my pocket holes. So we do get the question, do I need a foreman Craig jig 
for my builds. And honestly, if you build and sell furniture, I would say it's a great investment. If you are a DIYer and you're just building furniture for yourself, the K5 is about the third of the price of the Foreman. So it, it makes your work faster, but it's gonna do the same job. So you kind of just have to weigh it like that. But if you are building and selling quite a bit, it's a good investment because you can get your pocket holes done a lot faster. All right, so I'm moving up to my workbench because I want to get off my knees and it's a lot easier. And I'm starting to plank the tabletop with the two center boards first. I've got my pocket holes drilled and one of our shiny tips, everybody says, how do you get your tabletops so smooth between the planks? Do you plane your boards? We don't plane our boards. We rip the edges off like I explained before and we use these guys. These are Craig face clamps. The six inch is the one that I use the most, especially for the two by six boards. And all you do is clamp right at the joint, right there. And it's gonna keep the boards nice and flush together while you use your drill to attach the boards together. And I'm gonna flip it around and do the exact same thing on the other end. So I've got my pocket hole right here and I'm gonna clamp right underneath it. Okay. And then I'm gonna do it on every pocket hole spot down the board. Keeps it nice and smooth and flush on the front. Now, the reason we love the six inch clamps is because when we're planking the two by six boards, it'll reach all the way to that middle joint as you work to the outside. So if you use the four inch clamp, you're not gonna be able to use it with the two by six boards. And you can see it's so nice and smooth on the top. I can barely feel where the boards line up together. There's a little bit of a lip right there, but that'll sand off really easy. entire tabletop plank and now it's time to cut my circle. To do that, I always use this jig for my router that I built myself. It's super easy. We've got the plans and the how-to for it on our website and I'll add that in the description box below. But this one will do a table up to 60 inches wide. Um, I've used it for several different, different sizes and you want to use a plunge router for this. So I've got a screw hole right here that I have used for a 48 inch wide tabletop, which is what I'm cutting. And this is marked at 24 inches. So I'm going to line it up. So I'm going to mark center on this and I'm gonna attach this jig right to the tabletop upside down at that 24 inch mark. So I've got my jig attached right here, right in the center of the table. I've got my router bit right here, and you can see it's just gonna cut a circle right along the edge of these planks. All right, so I've got my jig attached to my tabletop, and now I'm just going to use my plunge router and make several passes with my plunge router. I'm gonna go about a half inch to a three quarter inch deep on each pass, so I'm gonna make about three passes until I can get all the way through. That way I don't break my bit. That's happened before. Okay, so I've made my first pass. I did a, between a half inch and three quarter inches. And it's got this nice buildup of sawdust. So I'm gonna make about two more passes on this and then we will have a nice, clean, round tabletop. All right, so now I'm just knocking out the sawdust so that my router can go back through nice and smooth. You're gonna wanna use a plunge router on this because the plunge router will let you plunge into the wood so you can start 
exactly where you need to without having to drill anything and you can continue to push the depth on each pass. I think the most difficult part is just figuring out how to get the router attached to the jig. But once you get that, then you can cut a circle so easy. And we've done, you can use a jigsaw. If you're using one by boards, you can definitely use a jigsaw. The problem with using a jigsaw on two inch boards is that the jigsaw blade is long and it tends to bend. So you're gonna have a little bit of a wonky finish on the edges of your table. So now I am gonna unlock my router and I'm gonna adjust the depth to cut. Let's go, we'll go down to one inch and then my third pass will do the full cut. And what's cool about this is once you set that depth, you can push it down and lock it in place so you don't have to push while you're guiding it around the table. All right, I've got the second pass done, so I'm gonna go through and knock out all that built up sawdust and make my final pass. Okay, so the second pass is done. I've got my sawdust cleaned out. I'm gonna set it to go a little over one and a half inches thick so that it goes through the bottom of this wood and then we're gonna see the pretty circle. Now I need to be careful that I stop. The last two passes, I've been able to stay on my workbench without having to move the table, but I'm going to have to move the tabletop so that it doesn't go through my workbench. So I need to be mindful of that. All done. That was so easy. It took maybe 15 minutes since I already had the jig and I already had the router set up. So if you're scared of cutting circles, don't be. It's actually super easy if you have the right tools and the right setup. So pretty. I love it. We've got a nice Smooth round tabletop made with only framing lumber. Two by sixes, guys. Give it a little bit of a sanding, but other than that, I think it's perfect. Okay, so I know you guys always like to hear our mess ups, but I just realized when I flipped the tabletop over that this center board right here was flipped upside down, so the pocket holes were on the top side when I flipped it to the good side, but I'm able to salvage it because it is a centerpiece and I can just flop it the other way. So I am doing that right now and I'm so happy that I saved my tabletop. I could have wood filled it, that was my first thought, but wood filler never stains the exact same way and I want to stain tabletop. So I'm really, really happy that this is not a complete fail right now. Good. Yes. Yeah, this is awesome. My mess ups aren't usually this easy to fix, guys. So I'm really excited. So here we go. Nice, smooth tabletop with no pocket holes on the top of it. And now I'm gonna get busy on that base. So I've got my circle completely cut and now I'm gonna move on to the base. And I'm gonna start with the legs. And I've already cut my legs to size with the 10 degree miter cut right here and I've also already ripped them down before I started building. So to do the legs I'm going to build four assemblies and I'm going to put one leg on top of the other to form one leg and they're already cut at their angle nice and smooth. I'm just going to use wood glue and two and a half inch finish nails to attach them. You can just glue them and use clamps to laminate them together. I'm not really worried about having nail holes on the bottom of this on the legs, so I'm just doing this to save time. Okay, this leg is done. That was super easy, especially since I already had the cuts done. And this is gonna sit underneath the tabletop just like this, and I've got runners that I'm gonna attach between each leg to add support. All right. Leg four is done. Now I'm going to measure and cut for the aprons and attach these leg pieces together. 
Okay, so I have cut my apron pieces to size and they are 45 degree angle cuts on each end, long point to long point, but I need to add pocket holes to the inside ends of each board and along one edge so that I can attach the entire base assembly to the tabletop. To drill the pocket holes on the inside when there is an angle, you do it the exact same way, except for I'm going to drill one and a half inch pocket holes and set my bit for three quarter inch pocket holes. That way it doesn't go through too far. So it'll look just like that and I can still use two and a half inch pocket hole screws for the tabletop. And now I'm gonna go along one edge and I'm gonna drill three quarter inch pocket holes with my bit set at three quarter inches also because this board's only three inches wide and I don't want to be able to see the pocket holes go into this edge. So this one's done and I've just got three more. So I've been playing with attaching this apron to the leg and I think the easiest way is to, it's hard to hold because both are cut at an angle. So I found the easiest way was to set the apron exactly where I want it, put a few nails in it, then you can set it down and drill the pocket holes into the apron. So I'm gonna try that on the next piece. You wanna make sure that you know exactly the way that the leg's gonna sit so that you put the apron on the right side of it. And then when you put the apron on, I'm centering it where the two boards meet and it's gonna be flush with the top of the leg. And you wanna make sure that when you attach the apron that the pocket holes are going into the tabletop. So I'm adding wood glue, setting it where I want it, and then I'm taking my nailer and just popping a few nails into it so it stays still. Now I'm flipping it on its side and I can access those pocket holes right here. And I'm following up with two and a half inch pocket hole screws. So I've got one apron on one leg. Now I'm gonna try to put the two pieces together. All right, so I have moved the leg assemblies down to the floor. I think it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to manage, and I'm trying to put two legs and two aprons together now. I'm gonna do it the exact same way. A lot of wood glue. Okay, I've nailed that in place, and now I'm following up with the pocket hole screws. If Whitney was here, this part would be a lot easier because I'd have an extra set of hands. It's part of the fun of building on your own. You have to, that's part of the challenge of building on your own. You have to find ways to work with only two hands and the angles can get kind of crazy, especially when you're trying to film it. All right, that is done. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest of the table base. A lot easier once you get two pieces together because the tabletop sits a lot better on the ground. And I'm going to show you what it looks like now. We've got the pocket holes hitting the table, pocket holes facing up into the tabletop, just like that. You're gonna be flush right here, and then flush down here. So I've got the main base assembled, legs and apron. Now I'm gonna do the cross runners. I know that I want my runners to start five inches from the ends of each leg, so I'm just going and marking five inches down from the inside leg. And now I'm going to measure and cut for that runner. 38 inches, that will be long point to long point, and I know it's a 10 degree angle because of my plans. And now I'm gonna cut pocket holes on one side of these. I will have to fill these, but I'm planning on painting the table base, so that's an easy fix. So I'm drilling one and a half inch pocket holes into one end. 
And that's how I'm going to attach the runners to the table legs. I'm adding wood glue to each end. Okay, I'm centering the runner on each table leg and I'm using two and a half inch pocket hole screws to attach. Another part where it would help to have a second hand. Wonder what it would do to lay this down. I wish Lola could help me with this. That would be clutch. Okay, so I've got the table on its side so it lays flat and I'm centering up the long runner on both of these table legs and I'm attaching them with two and a half inch pocket hole screws and wood glue. Okay, so I've got one runner done. It's really shirted up, it's making it super sturdy. Now I'm gonna measure and cut for these short runners and then all I have to do after that is add the decorative end pieces and the space is done. Now I'm drilling pocket holes into the short runners and it's gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna put pocket holes on one end and then also on the square end. One done. And the second one's done, now I'm gonna tap it. Okay, so I've got the pocket holes drilled for my short runners and now I'm gonna mark center on this side of the runner. And I'm going to start attaching on the square side, just because it's easier to hold. Okay, so the whole table base is completely done. And now I just have to add the little decorative pieces on each end. Okay, so I cut the decorative pieces and it's just a 10 degree miter cut off of each side and those are going to go five inches from the bottom of each leg just like this and they're going to line up with the runners. So I'm actually going to tip this upside down so it'll be easier to access and I'm attaching them with two and a half inch finish nails and you want the more narrow piece on the top or it's actually on the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna pop a few nails in to keep it in place, but I've only got two and a half inch finish nails, so I'm going to follow up with one three inch wood screw, and that's gonna be what holds it until the glue dries. I'll do the same thing on all four. Okay, that's done. Set it up, and I cannot wait to see what it looks like with the top attached. I was never pushed down a certain amount into the wood and X that. Sorry. Break your bit or. Okay. Sorry, Jeffrey. I don't even know what I'm saying. It's too late to do this. Okay. All right. So I've got my jig attached. Now I'm just going to use my plunge wrap. Ah! So I am. S Crap. I just realized I did that. Oh my gosh, Ashley. Why is that not going to shoot? Safety five. Why is that not? Okay, this is not good. Ah! 